Hi guys and welcome back to the garden. Today our project is going to be to get the dahlias planted up. Um, so we'll get those tubers actually planted into pots until the rest of the raised beds are ready. Um, so join me while we work on that today. Today we're going to talk all about growing dahlias. I'm going to plant some in pots here in the garden, but I also wanted to share some care tips and also the different types of varieties of dahlias that are out there. So dahlias can grow in the USDA hardiness zones of 8 through 11 as perennials. So they'll come back year after year once you plant them, but in the colder zones of 1 through 7, they're often grown as annuals, and so if you want to keep them from year to year, you have to dig them up and store them indoors. But then you can replant them the next spring as long as they're kept well in their storage. When planting dahlias, you want to choose a sunny location that has well-draining soil after the last frost, and usually this happens in late spring, which we're in early spring right now, and so mine are going into pots first. The soil that they prefer is rich, fertile soil, so adding organic matter is always good. They need watering regularly, but uh, not overwatering where they become waterlogged, so soggy soil could make their the tubers rot. Dahlias do appreciate fertilizer, and so a balanced fertilizer is always good. Uh, however, you could also get a fertilizer that has a higher middle number for the phosphorus. Dahlias also need to be staked uh, if they're the really tall growing ones. We're going to talk about a few varieties in, a, in it later on, and um, some of them won't have to be staked. But the taller dahlia varieties or the big dinner plate heavy varieties may need to be staked. And it's best to do this when you're when you've just planted them or when they're still young in the ground so that you don't damage the roots and the tubers. Dahlias also benefit from deadheading and so if you remove the spent flowers then they won't put all their production into creating seeds and instead they'll put their energy into blooming and making more flowers for you. They also like to be mulched and so of course it helps them retain moisture and keep the weeds down so some things like straw or shredded leaves or even compost would be good ideas. As we talked about earlier, planting in the higher zones, the dahlias will be considered perennials and will come back for you year after year without having to take them up out of the ground. But if you're in a lower zone, they'll need to be lifted and stored indoors. So after the first frost, uh, go ahead and cut back the foliage, dig up the tubers, and then store them in a cool, dry place until spring and then you'll want to take them out of storage and inspect each one of them make sure that they haven't had any rot over storage time or that they have gotten desiccated or really dried out uh, so that you can go ahead and get them back in the garden for that season and then for pests and diseases sometimes they can get powdery mildew or fungal rot so you want to watch out for those and treat those as needed, but also keep an eye out for aphids, slugs, and earwigs. There are lots of organic pest control uh, methods that you could use to take care of that. One of the great things about dahlias, besides their beautiful blooms, is that they continue to grow and create more. And so you'll want to divide these every few years. If you lift your dahlias already in the uh, after they have um, finished blooming, then you'll be able to divide them either before you put them away, or you could divide them whenever before you put them back in the ground the next spring. Uh, however, if they are perennial in your area, then you will want to dig them up every few years in the spring before they start blooming and go ahead and divide them into sections. So you want to make sure that they have uh, the, the actual one of the bulbs of the tuber and the neck of the tuber and a growth eye from the tuber. After you've made sure that you have all three parts that the plant is going to need to grow, then go ahead and put those back into the ground and you'll have even more that season. And who doesn't love free plants? 
Speaking of the differences in when to divide for the different zones, dahlias can struggle in the low, very low zones of two and three, but they can be lifted like we talked about earlier. In zones four and five, they can be grown successfully. Uh, they also may need extra mulching and lifting in the colder areas. And then zone six and seven, those are really well suited for dahlias. They can thrive there, but winter protection may still be necessary in those areas. Now I'm in a zone eight and dahlias generally do very well in our zone. So we have pretty mild winters. It doesn't normally get very, very cold. And so uh, we can just leave them in the ground over the winter in most cases. Some years we have that really cold snap and it will take things out, but generally uh, it is fine for us to leave them in the ground. Zones nine and 10, they can thrive as long as they're provided with plenty of moisture and protection from the extreme heat. And in zone 11, they can be grown there as well um, year round in the tropical climates. They just will need uh, regular watering and extra protection from very intense sun or very heavy rains. Okay, so here are the varieties that we have today. So we've got Thomas Edison, which is a beautiful purple variety. Onesta, a nice bright pink. We have White Perfection, and there's three of those. There's this pretty purple with white tips. It's called Mystery Day. There's two of those. We have this cute little pink one Stoltz von Berlin there's three of those we have this beautiful peach one it's called Nicholas and there are three of those and then there's this peppermint looking one and it's called short track it is white but then it has uh, a red color or burgundy with a little bit of yellow in the very center. There are three of these. The Happet Blue Eyes and it's a beautiful, really mainly white dahlia, but it has purple tips on the edges. And then I have two packs of these and there's three in each one. I love the mixture of the colors here. It kind of fades from a soft yellow to a light pink with a darker pink on the edges. Nanet, let's see, it is Nanekazi. Nanekazi? I don't know exactly how you pronounce that, but they're beautiful. And so I got two packs of those. And so there are six total. So we'll go ahead and work on getting these planted up into pots for now. Since we're in zone seven, they should overwinter for us when, once we put them in the ground or in the raised beds. But for now, until we're ready to do that, I wanna go ahead and get them potted up because they've been sitting in these bags for too long. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video a little bit because there are a lot of dahlias to plant as we just went over. So I'm just going to get the soil all ready and I am going to reuse some pots that I've had before in the garden and so um, just to keep down on some of the waste and so I will fill up the bottom of each pot with a little bit of soil and then take the tubers out of each of the plastic bags inspect them and separate them and then plant the tuber with the neck pointed up and the roots and the tubers pointed down. Then I'll go ahead and cover that over with more soil up to about the neck area. And if there's any new growth on there, uh, then I will leave that exposed. And I will just cover it with soil and get it all snug down in the pot. And then it will be ready to go on the ground where I'm keeping them all together so that I can go back through and label them later.
I thought that you might be interested in the different types of dahlias that are out there. And so really quickly, I thought I would go over a few of those. So there are single flower dahlias that have just one flat row of single cupped petals around a central disc like the one in the picture. This one in the picture is a ball dahlia and they have double ball shaped blooms with rounded petals. This one is very similar to the previous one except that it's much smaller and it's called a pompon dahlia. This one pictured is an anemone flowered dahlia and they have a central disc surrounded by rows of flat or cupped petals that make them look like they have sort of like a pom-pom in the center. I think they look like they have like little skirts on. The cactus dahlia is pretty popular. They have double blooms with very narrow pointed petals. Sometimes they curve or they twist and it kind of makes them look spiky. Decorative dahlias are another type. They have double blooms with broad flat petals arranged in a symmetrical pattern. Another really pretty one is this water lily dahlia. They have double blooms that are curved and arranged in a way that kind of resembles a water lily, hence the name, but they're really pretty. The orchid dahlia is quite unusual looking, and I don't have any of these, but they are double blooms that often have twisted or curled petals, and it kind of gives them an orchid-like appearance. They look like a star. The peony dahlias have double blooms with numerous petals and they're extra fluffy like a peony. Miniature dahlias are some that I mentioned earlier. Since they're shorter, they wouldn't need to be staked like some of these other ones, uh, but they do have smaller blooms and shorter stems. Dinner plate dahlias are a favorite. They have very large blooms, hence the name dinner plate. They're about that size, and they often exceed 10 inches in diameter. They come in lots of beautiful colors, too. The collarette dahlias have a central cluster of shorter petals, and then they're surrounded by an outer ring of longer, pretty petals. And then this last group, they're called novelty dahlias. So this is where all of the other ones go that are not in some of the previous categories. So they're the ones that have unique characteristics. They're not... Um, easily classified into other groups. They could have star-shaped petals or irregular flower forms. And so they have a little group all their own called Novelty. That's 27 pots of dahlias right now. And then I have also got some dahlia seeds that I'm going to work on uh, and get those planted up. And those are some of the florette seeds so they should be really pretty so we'll work on that on another gardening project and as we wrap up this time in the garden i'll share a few more clips of the dahlias that we planted today hopefully they'll be blooming before too long and i can show you an update on those i hope you enjoyed this video so thanks for joining me to get this accomplished today and until next time i hope you have fun in your garden i'll see you in the next video